closer to him. He's here tonight. Glory to God. He's here tonight. Not just to spectate, but to help to make whole, to touch our lives, to strengthen us, to give us what we need. That's why he's here. And if you can get your eyes and your attentions, just lift them up off your problems, off everything that's around you, all of the distractions, just focus on him. John said, Behold the Lamb of God. Look at Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I just want to talk to you a little bit. Remind you of how much you are loved and treasured. It's important that we understand that we are loved, that we are treasured. It's important because love is the most powerful transformer, restrainer, keeper in this world and in the world of God. You know, the Bible says God is love. You ever heard of those relationships where you have a couple that's been together for 40 years, 30 years, 50 years. One of them passed on, and not long after that, the other one passes on. They say that they love, that love goes beyond the grave. I know they say in marriage, in death, it was born, but nothing, nothing stops love. Because after they're gone, you still love them. Their love has affected your life. It's in your heart. The Bible says that love is stronger than death. It's the only thing that I've read in the Bible that says it's stronger than death. Love. As a matter of fact, that's what got Jesus about the grave on the third day. It was the love of the Father. St. John, St. John 3 16, he told, tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. The Son gave his life. And that same love that gave the Son rose his Son on the third day by justification. But love is the most powerful uh, source or, or force in the world. It has caused men, women to do some heroic things. Some of our most loved movies are those of the great love stories. We always want that theme running through our, through our movie. You have that, that man or that woman that will do anything for the person they love. There's something about that that's just uh, attractive to human beings. Because I believe it's because we come from the God of love. The Bible says he, God is love. But understanding that your love changes your life. What happens to a child that knows their love? What it affects their life in a way that it like nothing else can. A person, a child that knows, understands that they're loved. They're not fearful of, of, of being neglected or uh, left alone, or not fearful of, of 
the one who says they love them, that they're going to tell them a lie. Being loved causes you to trust. Understanding your love causes you to trust like nothing else. So, <laughs> we're going to read our, our first scripture right here. First John 4, 18 through 19, it says, there is no fear in love, y'all got it? 18 through 19. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He loved us, we love him, because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. So in order for us to truly love God, you must get this understanding that God loves you. That he loves you completely, that he loves us perfectly, because he is a perfect God. Amen. And God expresses his love, just like we do, different ways. Love is expressed in many ways. One of the main ways we express our love is by giving tokens of love, right? And the more expensive a token, the token of love is, the more you, sh the more you show how much you're willing to invest and sacrifice for the one you love. A token of love, sometimes we, we give rings, wedding rings, engagement rings, whatever it may be. But it's a token of our love. Maybe you might buy your spouse a car, maybe. Or you might buy one you love, a house, or something to show your love. That token is not saying this is what you're worth, this ring, but it's just a token of your love. So the more you had to sacrifice, had to invest in that ring, shows how much you care about that person or invest in whatever gift you're giving. Now, does God, because God says he loves you. That's what he says when everybody always walking around and saying, God loves you, God loves you. How many, how many have heard that? God loves you. God, he loves you, man. Okay. Does God give tokens? Does God Give something that represents his love. Has God given us something that shows us that he loves us? Has God given you something? Yes, he does. He gives tokens. He's given us. They're all around us. You think about creation. The creation. Genesis 1. says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then he created everything else. We can just take one of those things, a tree. What is the value of a tree? I got a little stuff here about a tree. Let me show you. The value of a tree. See, since the beginning, Trees have furnished us with two of life's essentials, food and oxygen. Food and oxygen come from trees, some a source of food. As we progress, they provided additional necessities such as shelter, the building we're in because of trees, medicines, when they get the sap out of trees, certain saps have certain nutrients in them to help our bodies become stronger. And tools, get paper, 
get hammers, you know, axes to ha axe handle. Anybody got, you know, any kind of wooden handle. Double barrel shot, you know, you got the shotgun, you got that handle on it, that come from a tree. Trees also contribute to the environment by providing oxygen, improving air quality, climate, conserving water, preserving soil, and supporting wildlife. During the process of photosynthesis, trees take in carbon dioxide and produce the oxygen we breathe. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, one tree, one acre of forest, absorbs six tons of carbon dioxide and puts out four tons of oxygen. Who created where the trees come from? According to Genesis, God created trees. Who did he create them for? Does God need trees? Does the angels need trees? He made the trees for mankind. He gave a tree, the trees for us. That's, that's a token, that's one, that's just one of his creation. There are thousands all around me. Tokens of God's love for you. How valuable is a tree? Without trees, what would happen to us? Oh, it'll be a whole lot, it'll be a lot harder, right? A tree. It's one of the tokens. The importance, the value of a tree has, it has, it is a priceless. You look at the fish. Did God create fish for him? Did God eat fish? I don't think so. Jesus ate some fish though. But he created the fish for you as a token of his love. He created all of the vegetation, different kinds of vegetables. God doesn't need, really need vegetables. He created them for us as a token of his love. He created the sun that rises in the east, sets in the west, gives us vitamin D and other nutrients that come from the sun. Other benefits of the sunlight. God doesn't need sunlight. It's a token of his love to you. How valuable is the sun to you? Do you know what would happen to your eyesight if there was no light? You would go blind. And when God first started the creation, the first thing he said was, let there be light. Why? He didn't need light. No, he was thinking about you. We need light. What I'm trying to get you to understand and see is all of creation, all of the stars, the moon, the host of heaven, the galaxies, every ecosystem, the seas, the oceans, the rivers, were all given and created as tokens of God's love for mankind, for the human race. God has given tokens of his love. The Bible says in Psalm 19 and 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter its speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Whose voice? Whose voice are you talking about? Creation. Creation. The sun, the moon, everywhere in the whole world. They can be seen. And the Bible says that they're declaring. They're saying something. What are they saying? God is saying, I love you with his creation when the wind blows that cool breeze what is God saying with his creation 
I love you. His creation speaks to us. Look around you. And then stop looking around you and look at yourself. Look at your hand. Why did God give you a hand? God don't need a hand, right? He got his own hand. He gave you a hand. Why? So you can do this right here. So you can take care of your, your temple, your body. As a token of his love, God gave us all brains. God gave us each other. For those that don't have hands, we can be their hands. Those that don't have legs, we can help them out because we have legs. As a token, God has given you uh, your eyesight, your ear, your, your hearing. As a token of his love, what is he saying to you? I care about you. So you don't even have to look to the Bible to understand that somebody cares about you. I'm here to tell you tonight that it's God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He loves you. He cares for you. And he is showing you day in, day out. I love you. I'm there. When he wakes you up in the morning, another token, another day, another 24 hours that he has granted you to show you his love for you. And the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. So understanding that God loves you yeah. is the only way that you can love him, that you can love your neighbor as yourself. Right. He said, the first and great commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. How can we do that if we don't understand how much we are treasured and loved by God? When you think about all other creation, the whole creation, the Bible says God gave it to mankind. He said, let them have dominion over it. The fish of the sea, the fowls on the air, every creepy thing that creeps upon the earth gave you dominion over it. It's kind of like when you, when, a, when you meet Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright, what do you give them? You, on your wedding day or, or, or if you're going to give them something on your birthday, you give them Something that you feel like is going to make them smile. It's going to make them understand that you really care. Amen. You want to see them smile. But what if they didn't notice you? What if they didn't know how much you love them? You give them something they think, they think is just coming out of, you know, it's just, they just happen to get it. Kind of like we do God. You got eyes, you got ears, you got... The activity of your limbs, you got the sun, you got the moon. You think, oh, look, that's just there. No, that's there because God is saying that he loves you. Take it personal. This is a personal world. God is a personal God. That's why he gave you your own mind. He gave, he gave you the ability to think. Because he gave you the ability to make decisions. The sun represents Something it's, it's, it's there for more than just sunlight, than just light, according to the scripture. He's saying something about the sun. And he's saying that I love you. Now, we St. John 3.16. Yep. St. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So love, real love, causes you to do something. God's love caused him to give something that was invaluable to him 
God's love caused him to create the heavens and the earth, which are in by him. But they're not worth more than his son. After the fall of man, the rejection of God, God gave something even more valuable to redeem you and me, showing his love in an even greater way. When the enemy deceived Adam and Eve, or Eve and Adam, whichever way you want to put it, the Bible says, God, for God so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever will believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. His love, he loved you so loved that God decided to give something that was invaluable to him and what he gave produces everlasting life to those who respond to it the right way. God loves you. God loves me. But your response to his love determines the outcome of your life on earth and in eternity. What is your response to the love of God? Because the Bible says that the love of God produces everlasting life. Life is what God love produces. Not death. Not fear. Not depression. To understand your love by God causes fear and burdens to be lifted. The Bible says that the perfect love of God removes fear and you won't have to live your life in fear. In fear of, of, of whatever may be causing you to fear. Whatever it may be. Fear loses control when we understand that God loves us and God is who he said he is. According to scripture. You see, God is not trying to make up his mind or figure out whether he loves you or not. He's not trying to make up his mind. He's not trying to figure it out. He loves you right now. Romans 5 and 6 says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for a nature for a good, good man, some would even dare to die. But God demonstrated, commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He's not trying to make up his mind. You are trying to make up your mind whether you're going to believe it or not. As Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Do you want to walk in victory? Do you want to walk in peace? In joy? Except what God has said. I love you. And you won't have to struggle. Anymore. You don't have to struggle to try to please me to love you because I love you while you were yet in your sins. And the Bible says he died for us while we were sinners. So what do you think he think about you now that you have accepted him? If you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, don't struggle. He loves you. Don't beat yourself up. God loves you. Understanding that will help you when temptation comes. It will help constrain you. It will help Amen. keep you yes, it will. from yielding to temptation. Understanding that you're loved. And if you do fall, you know what the love of God does? It helps you to get back up. Amen. We're in a fight. We're in a battle. And in a battle, you're not defeated unless you stay down. Any competition, any 
boxing match or, or wrestling match. And this kind of wrestling match, especially, because it's for your eternal destination. You're only defeated if you quit. Don't allow the devil to condemn you because you make a mistake or because you sin. The Bible says we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. That if we would confess our sins, he is right, righteous and just. He's faithful, righteous and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have an advocate. We have a lawyer. We have a mediator between us and God. It's Jesus Christ the righteous. And God is the one that put it there. Why? Because God loves you. Let be convinced of it. He's been trying to show you your whole life. He's trying to show you now. He's going to try to show you in the morning. That's what's going to change your life. Understanding that you're loved. You've been trying to change. The love of God will change you. It changed a murderer. A murderous man who was bent on getting rid of Christians. It changed him. Paul. His name was Saul. But the Bible says on the road to Damascus, Jesus revealed himself to, to, to Saul and he became Paul. God changed him by the love of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world. Not just the earth. He's not talking about the moon, the stars, he's talking about the people in the world. You are treasured by God. And he gave his only begotten son. We are treasured by God. This scripture right here in Matthew 13 and 44 through 45 says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in the field, which a man found and hid again, and for joy, from joy over it, goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Yep. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field which a man found in, and hid again and from joy over it he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Jesus told this parable and we heard it many times that it's talking about us finding Jesus and we got to forsake all to, to follow him. But I believe the proper interpretation of this is Jesus is saying that he is that man Amen. that found a treasure. And that treasure is you. It's me. Thank you, Lord. Because he's the one that sold, that, that sold everything. and gave up everything. And we can't buy salvation, so how can we go and buy anything in the kingdom of God? We don't have... Jesus bought us with, the, with his precious blood. The Bible says we were purchased with the precious blood of the Lamb. He redeemed us. Redeeming means to buy back, to get back. So, you are the treasure. Jesus became poor that you might become rich. That you might know your heavenly Father and know that He, you are loved by him. That's the riches. To know God. The Bible says, let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor the rich man in his riches, nor the wise man in his wisdom, but let him that glories, glory in this, that he understands and knows me, says the Lord. But the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, it's like a treasure hid in the field, a man found, and he went and sold all he had. Jesus is that man. Jesus is a this is the God man that sold everything, gave up everything. Jesus gave up everything. His life, his crown, his, his, his uh, throne, he left his throne in heaven. Came down to the earth and humbled himself. Came obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Died as a criminal. Not only did he just, he didn't just die, but he gave up his connection to the heavenly father. He gave up his relationship with the Father. Because the Bible says while he was on the cross, that he, the Father forsook him. He said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? He forsook Jesus. God, the Father, forsook his Son so that he wouldn't have to forsake you and me. 
to prove his love, to come and save us from eternal damnation, from justice, because we justly don't deserve eternal life. You believe you deserve eternal life, eternal joy, eternal bliss? Probably none of us in there think that. So God came. God sent his son to give us our place back with him. To give us a right or a chance to become sons of God so that we can have that relationship that Adam lost once more. And he gave up everything so that he could claim you as his treasure. Jeremiah said, the Lord appeared to me from ages past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you and continue my faithfulness to you. God has an everlasting love for you, which is why, once again, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God gave us all these tokens around us that I mentioned, the sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, the, all the food sources. But God gave us something that trumps all of that, which shows that he really loves us. You know what he gave us? He gave us himself. So when you get through giving the tokens, the rings, the cars, you know what really makes that love rock solid is when you give yourself to the one you love. Your mind, your heart, your body. The Bible says present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God.